Welcome to the next webinar in the Financial Friday series. My name is Derek Watson and today I'm very pleased to be introducing Sarah Smith. Sarah is an independent financial advisor with Money for Dentists and has kindly agreed to talk to us about a new European directive that's coming into force very soon. So over to you Sarah. Hi everybody, I'm Sarah and as Derek has mentioned I'm an independent financial advisor with Money for Dentists and for the next few minutes I'm going to explain how your gender can affect your financial planning. One of the main ways it does this is through the EU Gender Directive. At the start of 2011 the European Court of Justice ruled that insurers could no longer consider your gender when calculating insurance premiums, rates and any benefits. This was due to a challenge by a Belgian consumer group. They argued that the exemption for insurers to be able to discriminate on gender contradicted the wider European principle of gender equality. So when does this come into force? Well, in fact, next Friday, the 21st of December 2012. And what does it affect? Well, that's everything from your car insurance, life protection, private medical insurance, income protection, and in fact your pensions. So let's start first with explaining how it's going to affect your car insurance. Now the impact on car insurance premiums is likely to be quite sudden and significant. A research paper from the Association of British Insurers suggests that the biggest impact of the gender ruling will be felt by drivers in the age 17 to 25 age bracket. Until now, insurers have been able to calculate their premiums using evidence from claim statistics that shows that young males are more of a liability on the road than young females and so young males have been charged more for their cover than females of the same age. Given that these drivers in this age bracket are relatively new, insurers have had very few other sources of data to go on to base their premium prices, so have used gender. As the insurers can no longer make a gender distinction, premiums for young women drivers are expected to rise significantly to the levels charged of young men drivers in that age bracket. It's the old saying that women get sick and men die, which has meant until now that critical illness cover has been more expensive for females than males and life cover more expensive for males. Premiums in this area have fallen over the past decade and are now expected to rise with an increase in life insurance and critical illness premiums of as much as 30% for some people. Premiums for women are likely to rise significantly as historically life cover has been cheaper for women whose life expectancy is longer. To give you an idea, as a rule of thumb, some insurers are anticipating an increase in premiums for life cover only of 20% for women and a fall of 10% for men. For critical illness cover, premiums are likely to equalise. In addition to the new gender discrimination rules, insurers are also being faced with taxation changes, which means that premiums would have increased anyway. Known in the industry as I-E, these taxation changes come into play on the 1st of January 2013. So many insurers are bringing it in early along with the G-Day changes to avoid two price changes in the space of 10 days. While some insurers don't take gender into consideration as a factor affecting private medical insurance pricing, therefore it's not anticipated there's going to be much of a change in this market. For those providers who do use gender-based pricing for individual policies, there'll be a maximum price change of approximately 5% with males seeing an average premium increase of 2%, whilst females are likely to see a decrease of around 1%. And for those that hold group policies, again, no change is expected there. Some of the other insurers do have slightly different views, with one insurer believing young men may actually see a rise in their premiums, while women could see a fall, and this position to be reversed as you get older, with some older men enjoying a small fall in their premiums while the gender discrimination rules come in. Changes in income protection premiums will go in the opposite direction to those for life insurance. Women are more likely to claim on an income protection policy, so they've traditionally paid higher premiums than men for an equivalent policy. So looking at how this is going to affect premiums, well, unfortunately, it's bad news for men out there who will be seeing an increase in premiums on an average around 25%. But good news for females who will see a decrease of approximately 30%. So for the women listening, reviewing your income protection should definitely be on the list of New Year's resolutions. Gender is only one variable for income protection, with occupation having a much greater impact on premiums, as you will learn from my colleague Julian's webinar in November. Well, currently, as men on average have a lower life expectancy than women, they're offered annuity rates that often mean that they receive a higher income than women in a similar position. When the gender neutral rates are used from the 21st of December, the rates for men are expected to be lower, 
so there'll be a reduction in the level of annuity income that men will receive. Based on current annuity rates, the difference this may mean to the annuity rates quoted for men and women will range from 0 to 13 percent, depending on the level of benefit and the annuity options chosen. Going forward, annuity providers are likely to calculate their annuity rates by blending their male and female rates. This means that their unisex annuity rates are likely to fall somewhere between the current and female rates. Also, when considering draw drawdown, from the 21st of December 2012, we'll no longer be able to use gender of a factor when determining the GAD maximum available to individuals. The Government Actuary Department, known as GAD, currently has separate tables for men and women due to the differences in life expectancy. This is the reason why males are normally offered a higher GAD maximum than females. In the future, males and females must be provided with the same maximum and HMRC has confirmed that for the time being it will be the current male table. This means the maximum income rate will stay the same for males but in truth for females. However, underfunding pensions is another area where women are particularly at risk. As they're more likely to take career breaks and work part-time, they're putting less into pensions and as they live longer, they need bigger retirement pots as inflation will have a bigger effect. Many women rely on their husband's pension However, as we've discussed earlier, women are far more likely to outlive men and the spouse's pensions offered are usually up to half of the male's full pension. So women face the prospect of a huge drop in household income on the death of their spouse. So how do you combat this? Well, for me, females, it's about investing more. And for men, it's about investing on their wives' behalves. Did you know that even non-earners can invest up to 3,600 per annum into pensions and still gain tax relief? So as you can see, Currently, gender has a big impact on your financial planning. Based on the analysis, there are going to be winners and losers. However, seeking true independent advice will ensure that the whole market is considered for your policies, meaning you're guaranteed to get the best mutual rate. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, in addition to our series of financial videos, please check out our other videos for dental professionals on information technology and other management issues. Free CPD for all webinars is available to DFO and DPA members and that about wraps it up. So thanks for your time and attention.